So I'm delighted to be asked to give this introduction because I've also had the privilege of working with the ambassador. Um, if, but just if you permit me uh, two minutes of my own thoughts um, that we're really at an <clears throat> extraordinary moment in history. Um, the international community is being tested as to whether it can stand up to a blatant invasion of the territory of Ukraine. This is an assault against the global order. And the strongest, most legitimate response, as we heard from David Crane yesterday, would be the establishment of a special tribunal on the crime of aggr aggression created through the United Nations. The UNGA would recommend the tribunal's establishment, and then it would be created by bilateral agreement between the UN and Ukraine. Only this approach will stave off the application of personal immunities that would otherwise insulate top-level Russian leadership. Any other approach, such as the weak hybrid proposal uh, of a tribunal within Ukraine's system, would make little sense because the top level leadership would be immune. And if I could just take one moment on definitional terms, I know there was confusion. David endorsed a hybrid approach, but it's a hybrid through the UN system. Um, and he's, of course, working with Erwin Cutler and Hans Corell, and David Schaeffer and I, and Ona Hathaway, and uh, the government of Liechtenstein, uh, Klaus Kress, uh, Strait Reisinger Corsini, only have a very slightly different version of a fully international tribunal, but again, through the UN. There is a different hybrid tribunal proposal out there, and this is being set forth by the US, with G7 countries lining up behind it. And it's, we create a tribunal within the Ukrainian system. And that means immunities apply. So your very top level leaders cannot be prosecuted. And this is a leadership crime in the definition of APIS in the Rome Statute. Only the leaders are those responsible, those with control over the political or military affairs of the state. So if we go with the US approach, we are immunizing Putin. And this needs to be made clear. They also are not um, opaque about the fact that their tribunal would take years to create because it requires an amendment of Ukraine's constitution. And you cannot amend Ukraine's constitution while they're at war. So we have to first achieve peace, amend the constitution, create the tribunal years from now. So this is the difference that we're talking about when David and I are saying why we need to go through the UN system. But enough about that. I am here to introduce the ambassador. She is ambassador at large at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the government of Ukraine. His background is a specialist in international humanitarian law, international criminal law, and international energy law. He has served as professor at the Institute of International Relations, Department of International Law, Taras Shevchenko National University of Kyiv. In 2019, he was appointed permanent representative of the President of Ukraine in the Autonomous Republic of Crimea. He is also agent of Ukraine before the International Court of Justice in the Allegations of Genocide case. He's been appointed member of the Working Group on the Development and Implementation of International Legal Instruments of Reimbursement of Damages Caused to Ukraine by the Aggression of the Russian Federation, an appointment within the Office of the President of Ukraine. He is also coordinating the issue of the establishment of the Special Tribunal on the Crime of Aggression. Ambassador. And Jennifer uh, emphasized Ukraine uh, strongly believes that we need to have the special tribunal for the crime of aggression against Ukraine established. Uh, it is a part of Ukraine's uh, peace formula by President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky, which includes point seven, which deals with accountability and justice. And inside this point seven, uh, we have the need to ensure accountability for the crime of aggression and to establish a special tribunal for this reason. And why does Ukraine uh, advocate and works uh, on the international level for the establishment of the special tribunal? 
Uh, I would say that we have started this job in the end of February 2022, and it was our legal reaction to the full-scale invasion by the Russian Federation to the territory of Ukraine. We understood that we need to try to get perpetrators of the crime of aggression against Ukraine to accountability, and that the best way to do that would be to have them in court. And then we try to analyze and analyze what are the possibilities for us to get the representatives of the highest political and military leadership of the Russian Federation to court for the crime of progression. And of course, we found out, as anybody in this room, that currently there is no court or tribunal which can bring Russian political and military leadership uh, to accountability for the crime of progression. Uh, we may recall the International Criminal Court uh, we, as Ukraine, our government, we recognize jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court and ICC currently exercises jurisdiction over the situation in Ukraine in relation to the commission of the three categories of four international crimes. Crime of genocide, crimes against humanity and war crimes. But unfortunately, under the current jurisdictional regime over the crime of aggression, the ICC cannot exercise jurisdiction over the Russian aggression against Ukraine. It would have been able to do this only in case if uh, both Ukraine and Russia ratified their own statute and the relevant compiled amendments on the ground of aggression, or the United Nations Security Council would refer the situation in Ukraine to the International Criminal Court. We, of course, understand that currently neither of these uh, uh, situations, neither of, the, of these conditions can be applied. So that is why we try to look at alternatives and to try to establish a special tribunal which would be able to close this accountability gap. And this is a very important issue for our government because Ukraine, since 2014, since the very outbreak of the Russian aggression against Ukraine, uh, started to use effectively and actively each and every possible international legal instrument and mechanisms and tools to get Russia to accountability. Uh, uh, just a brief notion on this, Ukraine has made applications to each and every international court and tribunal to which we could file our applications against the Russian Federation. In particular, the International Court of Justice, the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea, arbitration tribunals on the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, European Court of Human Rights, um, the recognition of the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court. But we understood that these existing tools are not enough and we need to close at least two existing gaps in order to be able to say that full, comprehensive accountability for all the violations of international law in the territory of Ukraine is ensured. These two gaps are accountability for the crime of aggression and establishment of a compensation mechanism for reimbursement of damage. Compensation mechanism is a big different story, so today we talk about the special tribunal. And in the end of February 2022, we started to work on this matter. From for the very beginning, a lot of our partners and friends told us, uh, Ukrainian colleagues, maybe you shouldn't do that. Try to use all the existing tools, uh, all the possible tools which are now uh, possible in international law. Uh, and we should not invest anything. But we understood that we need to keep pushing this issue. And today, I think, in the end of August 2023, we may say that we reached quite good interim intermediate results on the way to the establishment of the special tribunal. And in the beginning of, of this road, uh, we even could not imagine that we might have these results. So the most important interim intermediate result is the establishment of the International Center for the Prosecution of the Crime of Aggression Against Ukraine, ICPA, in The Hague. It started to work in the beginning of July, 
under the auspices of joint investigation team where Ukraine, six members of the European Union, uh, Office of the Prosecutor of the ICC and Eurojust participate. And this ICP agency center works as a coordination platform on gathering the evidence and conducting investigation into the crime of aggression against Ukraine. So this is a place in the Cape, in the headquarters of Eurojust, where Ukrainian prosecutors, together with prosecutors from other states, like Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, together uh, make investigation into the crime of aggression against Ukraine. But of course, we understand that this center is only the first step, and the next step should be the tribunal itself because there is no need to conduct investigation and prosecution if there will be no tribunal established. But we believe that this center itself is a value since uh, this is the first international effort uh, in relation to investigation and prosecution of the crime of aggression after the Second World War. Uh, moreover, throughout this uh, one year and a half, we also will cut quite good political support uh, on international arena. In particular, we have uh, seven resolutions of Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, uh, five resolutions of the European Parliament, one of them being special and dedicated specifically for the need to establish a special tribunal, several resolutions of Parliamentary Assemblies of NATO, OEC, uh, resolutions of national parliaments, which are strongly calling uh, international community to establish the special tribunal for the crime of aggression against Ukraine. Moreover, uh, within the European Union, there is a very important <coughs> instrument which is called European Council Conclusions, which are the decisions of the highest authoritative body of the European Union, European Council, and uh, all the recent European Council Conclusions call for the establishment of the Special Tribunal and support further progress on this track. Uh, decisions of the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe also support the need to establish a Special Tribunal. So now, with this political support, with this start of operations of the ICPA, we are now on the very important track of getting the things done in legal sense and establishing a tribunal. For that reason, uh, the core group operates. Uh, core group uh, is a gathering of 38 states as of now, uh, which are represented by the legal advisors from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And core group meets quite often uh, in different places to discuss the possible models and possible uh, other legal technical issues uh, in relation to the establishment of the special union. Uh, it is important to notice that different states, different members of the core group might have different views on how the tribunal should be established, but all the states are united in the value that we need a mechanism for the crime of aggression against Ukraine. I think that this uh, very important provisional also interim result. And now the things which uh, you have probably discussed or you will discuss after having such great professionals as Jennifer and David uh, in the company, uh, how to establish a special tribunal. Of course, for us, the best way to establish a special tribunal will be to establish it, it as an international tribunal, as Jennifer just now referred to it fully international, though of course we may say that there might be hybrid international or international hybrid, but I also consider that uh, now we need to make a distinction between these two modalities. So a full international tribunal, meaning a tribunal which is based on international law and which may be considered as acting on behalf of, of the international community. And it is obvious that now one of the possibilities to establish such a tribunal and the principal one is to have a tribunal on the basis of uh, Ukraine-United Nations Agreement uh, with the relevant resolution of United Nations General Assembly uh, which will instruct or invite or request, uh, however we call it, the United Nations Secretary General 
to um, have an agreement with Ukraine on the issue of establishment of the special tribunal. Uh, we consider that this option might be the most legitimate and credible one, and uh, again, uh, this may be the option which may work uh, in the name and on behalf of the whole international community. And last but not least, it might be, it might have good results uh, in the uh, issue of overcoming of both functional and personal immunities. And when we talk about personal immunities, of course, we talk about personal immunities of so-called Troika, sitting head of state, head of government, and minister of foreign affairs. Persons who are able to represent their governments in international relations without any credentials, and uh, by this they are considered in customary international law to have personal immunities. But personal immunities do not apply before international courts and tribunals. Uh, the other option for the establishment of the special tribunal, uh, which is supported by some of our international partners and friends, is the establishment of the tribunal on the basis of Ukraine's judicial system and judicial le uh, and Ukraine's legal system, the so-called hybrid tribunal. So the tribunal which raises from the national legal system and national judicial system, but uh, is uh, also having uh, international elements, like this may be a relocation, say, to the Hague, um, international judges, international prosecutors, international financial administrative support. Uh, we are not so keen in looking into this option on the basis of Ukraine's legal system due to the issue again which Jennifer very, uh, very, very correctly mentioned. Uh, first of all, we, as you are well aware, are now in a war. So we have martial law enacted in Ukraine. Uh, this means that we cannot have any amendments to the Constitution of Ukraine currently uh, whenever we still have this martial law enacted. And uh, we will need amendments to the Constitution of Ukraine if we establish a hybrid tribunal. Uh, we may need these amendments for several reasons, but the most important one is that under the Ukrainian Constitution only nationals of Ukraine can be judged in the courts of Ukraine. And uh, we do believe that uh, whenever we establish a special tribunal, we should have foreign nationals uh, as judges, as we don't want to have this tribunal as being biased as a victim state trial, and uh, biased that one state party to the international armed conflict is conducting an investigation and prosecution of the leadership of another state party to an international armed conflict. So this is the thing which we are concerned with. Moreover, uh, if we establish such a hybrid uh, tribunal inside the Ukraine's legal system, it may not be called a court which will be acting on behalf of the international community. And uh, both legally and politically, uh, there is this concern whether it will be enough to have a court which will be acting only on behalf of Ukraine and not on behalf of the international community in this case, whether this is the appropriate reaction to this matter. Uh, the discussions on the modality continue, uh, and uh, these discussions are uh, very sensitive, specific, and particular ones. Uh, we will continue our efforts, and we will continue our efforts uh, with the final aim to establish a special tribunal, which will be able to do its job. So, tribunal shall be effective, and when I say this, I mean that it should be able to uh, bring to responsibility, to accountability, uh, representatives of the top political and military leadership of the Russian Federation, of those who are engineers of this war, of this aggression, and uh, it should be able to do this uh, on the credible, legitimate, and justifiable basis. Uh, and maybe to, to finish up this, uh, uh, my intervention, and maybe open the floor to questions, answers, or comments, whatever, um, we here in Kyiv uh, understand that this struggle for the special tribunal for the crime of aggression 
is important for us, for Ukraine, for Ukraine pe for Ukrainian people, for Ukraine's government, uh, because we need accountability. And of course, accountability is not only the matter of the crime of Russia. Accountability is also national proceedings for war crimes, for alleged genocide. Accountability is also actions of international criminal court and investigation into alleged war crimes, crimes against humanity, and the crime of genocide. And we uh, appraise the actions of the ICC, uh, the issuance of uh, arrest warrants for uh, Mr. Putin and Ms. Vova Belova. These are really historic moments in international criminal justice. But whenever we talk about war crimes, crimes against humanity, the crime of genocide, these are still like episodes committed during this war, which lasts for nine years. Uh, if we want to have responsibility and accountability for the war itself, so this is accountability for the crime of aggression. Only the crime of aggression can cover accountability for this whole war. And moreover, uh, while we understand here in Kiev that the establishment of the Special Tribunal is of importance, of, of particular great importance for us, we understand that it is also beneficial for international community. Because we do believe that if in this particular case, when we have at least the biggest war of aggression in Europe after 1945, this crime of aggression is left without legal response, it might be a big damage to the concept of the crime of aggression itself, and it might be a big damage to the concept of the foundational principle of prohibition of the use of force. So that is why I think uh, we have the support for this endeavor. This is why I think we have the understanding of our partners that we need to have a tribunal, because this situation may not be left without response. Uh, as the International Military Tribunal in Nuremberg called the crime of aggression, or how it was labeled that time crimes against peace, this is accumulated evil of the whole. And this is how we in Ukraine understand it. This accumulated evil of the crime of aggression covers all other mass atrocity crimes which uh, were committed and are committed in our soil. There are different conflicts, there are different situations in the world, there are no international armed conflicts where war crimes and crimes against humanity are committed, but in Ukraine the situation is clear. Before Russian aggression, before 2014, my country didn't know what is a war crime. My country didn't know what is a crime against humanity. And the outbreak of Russian aggression brought this horrible uh, mass atrocity crimes to our soil. So that is why we believe that we need to keep the ball rolling, we need to pursue uh, the accountability for the crime of aggression, we need to establish a special tribunal which would be able to do its job, and I'm really grateful for all the assistance and support uh, from professionals, uh, academics, experts, lawyers throughout the world who support us on this role. Uh, I thank you, and if we have a Q&A session, I will be most happy to try to answer your questions. Thank you, Anna.